This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the uh, last, well, this is the fifth or the sixth lecture, but it's our last lecture on limited companies. I said there was a lot in this chapter. Uh, and I want to pick up three things. First of all, if you're following me in the uh, lecture notes, uh, you'll see mention of preference shares. Uh, which are much less common. You see, all companies must have what we call ordinary shares or equity, which are the type of shares we've been dealing with uh, all the way through these lectures. They're what you normally think of as shares. The shareholders have put money in. They uh, are entitled to vote at company meetings. And they'll be hoping to get a dividend. But the amount of the dividend each year isn't guaranteed. It very much depends on how much profits the business has made. If they're more profitable, they'll expect a bigger dividend. Less profitable, they'll expect a lower dividend. Now, all companies must have shares of that type. Some companies, though, have some extra shares called preference shares. It's less common, but these are extra shares which are somewhat different. Because preference shares, they get a fixed dividend each year. Uh, whether the profits higher or lower doesn't affect them, they get a fixed dividend each year, provided there are profits there at all. And they're called preference because they get their dividend first, their fixed dividend. Uh, the ordinary shareholders, their dividend comes out of whatever's left. And the way uh, it tends to be described, look at example six. A company has in issue 10,000 5% preference shares of a dollar each. The dividend is payable half yearly, which is quite common. So every six months they get the dividend. Well, their dividend is guaranteed. As I say, it doesn't matter what the profits are. When it says it's 5%, the dividend is 5% of the nominal value of a dollar. Uh, and so the dividend on each share is 5 cents. Uh, but it's 5 cents per year. If it's payable half yearly, they'll get 2.5 cents every six months. And so the total dividend uh, every six months, there are 10,000 shares. Uh, again, it's five cents a year dividend. Half of that uh, is two and a half cents, which comes to, <laughs> oh, what's it come to? Uh, 250. So uh, each, uh, for each share, they'll be getting two and a half cents every six months. The total the company is paying is two fifty every six months. But again, it's a fixed dividend. Now, don't forget what I said. The company, every company, has to have ordinary shares. It's just some companies have these shares as well. Uh, but one other thing. As you'll see below, preference shares can be either redeemable or irredeemable. Now, redeemable means repayable. So these shares, they, they might have 5% preference shares, repay, blah, re, repayable in 10 years' time. So they'll get the dividend every year, then in 10 years, they'll get the cash back. Or they can be what we call irredeemable which means they'll carry on getting a dividend each year, but they'll never get the shares repaid. Well, if they're redeemable, it's just like taking a loan. You know, if you take a loan from the bank, you'll pay interest each year, and then, five years, ten years, whatever, you'll repay. Prefer redeemable preference shares. All right, they'll get dividend each year, but it's a bit like interest, it's fixed. And then in five years, ten years or whatever, it'll be repaid. 
So redeemable are just like borrowing money. And so, uh, read what I've written carefully, but they are shown as non-current liabilities in the statement of financial position. Because it's just like a loan. And the dividends payable each year is shown with the interest on the statement of profit or loss. It's just like interest on a loan. On the other hand, if they're irredeemable, if they're never repayable, well, then it's they're treated more like ordinary shares. They're shown under the uh, underneath the equity, and the dividends, just like ordinary dividends, aren't shown on the statement of profit or loss. It reduces the retained earnings. Uh, over the page. Just two more statements that can be mentioned. Uh, the first, the statement of comprehensive income. All this is, it's the same as the statement of profit or loss. Exactly the same as the statement of profit or loss. But, just to make it clear to shareholders what's happening, we show the profit for the year. If you look at that, it's 20,000. You know, it's a normal step profit or loss. But then we do show below any unrealised profits that have been. And the only one you'll see in this exam is a revaluation of assets, which we dealt with in the last lecture. And so the profit for the year is 20,000. That goes to retained earnings. A surplus on revaluation is 5,000. That appears separately, revaluation reserve. But we say the total comprehensive income is the two together at 25,000. And so the statement of uh, comprehensive income, it does include statement of profit or loss. You know, show that again. It's a statement of profit or loss. But just to make it clear to shareholders, we show this uh, surface on revaluation at the bottom. Uh, finally, you wouldn't be asked to, ask to prepare one, but be aware of it. Uh, the last document that's required is a statement of changes in equity. Uh, because if you look at the statement, oh, look way back, look way, 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 way back. At the beginning of this chapter, we have a statement of financial position. And if you have gone back through the chapter, you'll see uh, there was share capital of 50,000, capital reserves 15, revenue reserves retained earnings 42. And we've already said in practice, as against this year's figures, you'll have last year's figures. And shareholders will obviously be interested to know why are the figures this year, why have they changed from last year? And so to explain to them, they get this statement of changes in equity. And just have a quick look at it with me. It should be fairly clear. We're saying the balance is at the end of last year, beginning of this year, that all spent share capital was 40. The share premium, the evaluation reserved in Texas, retained earnings of 27. Why will they have changed? Well, all the reasons are listed. Uh, maybe we've had a revaluation this year. So any surplus, 5,000, goes to revaluation reserve. There you are, 5,000. At the end of this year, it's 5,000. Uh, the profit for the period, what will have happened to the profit? It increases retained earnings. So there you are, retained earnings, there's an extra 20. What about dividends paid though? They reduce retained earnings. And so you can see the statement is simply explaining why it's 42,000 at the end of this year when it was only 27 at the end of last year. And finally, they've had an issue with shares. Well, of course, if we issue shares, the share capital will have gone up. And if they were issued as a premium, share premium will have gone up. And so there you are, explaining share capital last year was 40, this year it's gone up to 50, there's the reason. And similarly, share premium, there was none, 
this year there is. There's the reason. So again, you won't be asked to produce that statement. But I think it shouldn't take you a long time to have a look at that and just be clear what it's doing. It's simply explaining to people why the capital balances, the equity balances, why they've changed from last year to this year. All right, sorry there's been uh, so many lectures here. Uh, I say there's not an awful lot of numbers involved, but you know, go back to it to the extent you need and certainly make sure you have different terminology and rights issues on bonus issues.